So thanks to the overwhelming response and support that I got from last week's email newsletter, I decided to make this video to break down the five businesses that I currently run and how they are all semi-related to each other, but they were built upon each other. So it's not like I started these five businesses all at once. This has all been a progression over the last about three years to get to this point from where I created a simple $3 digital product on Etsy and turned that into something that consistently earns me over $65,000 to $75,000 a month across the five different businesses. So to really understand how I even started making the digital designs that got me the first big initial success, I need to take a few steps back and show you the types of cups that I was making um, before I fell into the world of sublimation designs. So if you aren't familiar, this is a glitter resin tumbler. So it's made with epoxy and all different types of glitter and paint. Um, there's even vinyl on it if you are personalizing it. Um, so these were very popular and trendy back um, a few years ago. They're still pretty popular, um, but they are very time intensive and expensive to make. They will average about one to two weeks to make one if you are doing this um, correctly. And we just found that with the amount of orders that we were getting, it just simply was not scalable because you always have to be working to fill your orders and it just is too long of a time process to really scale it beyond the six figures that we wanted to. So while I was pregnant with a third child, I couldn't really work with epoxy anymore since it is not recommended for your health. I decided to try and find other types of tumblers that didn't involve resin and epoxy and uh, everything that went along with that. So I found the sublimation tumblers, which came out um, a good three year, three or four years ago, but I stumbled upon these because it was a version of tumbler that didn't require any hazardous chemicals. And it was a very simple process taking only about five minutes to make one of these versus the two weeks to make one of these. So um, we got, again, really successful with the sublimation tumblers. We were getting over 50 orders a day at times and we were um, able to scale that much, much easier just because it only takes about five minutes to make it. You simply just press your design onto the cup once you print it and then you box it up and it's good to go. So those, again, over six figures we were doing and I just wanted to find, because again, I was pregnant with the fourth child at that time, something to find that I was not needed to be so hands-on on the business. So I wasn't gonna be the one making the cups. So I really started looking for something that would be more passive. And now that I think about that, because I, I just totally do not believe in the word passive income because it's just this negative connotation that YouTube has kind of put on this make money online space and that anything can be passive when that's just really not the case. There are ways to set things up so that they might be more passive, but it really isn't um, a real thing, but I digress. So um, I decided to just make the digital designs for these since I was familiar with the audience of who bought these cups. I knew that I would be able to create designs that people would want um, to purchase and then that would be it from me. They would just be purchasing the digital file. It's more of a business to business transaction, meaning I am selling the digital design to a business owner like myself who made the tumblers before and then they would then make the cup and then sell to their customer. So in 2022, um, I, of January, 2022, January, I removed all of the physical products off of my shop and I just started adding digital designs for those 20 ounce skinny tumblers. And by March, I had close to 500 listings and it was in March, um, the middle of March, that I had my first $15,000 month. 
So I did have a few designs that did go viral and I was um, putting those types of designs out on TikTok as well. So I did have an influx of customers. I had several of them go viral at the same time. So that is what brought in the initial boost of traffic into a brand new digital shop. Even though it wasn't a new shop, I only had a couple hundred reviews and um, a couple thousand sales. It wasn't like I had a huge store. I didn't even have over 10,000 sales now that I think about it. So it was really that external marketing on TikTok, I think, and a couple videos that went crazy that brought in those initial customers. So fast forward to now, February 2024, um, we'll go into the five businesses that have all been a result of these um, digital files for tumblers. And that is the first business, which is obviously Bailey Designed Co., which is probably the one that you're all the most familiar with since that is what this channel has been built around since I have shown the shop the things that I have implemented um, implemented into my shop, the way I design and marketing strategies that I have applied to grow that shop to what it was. At the height of Bailey Design Co. last year, it was making $45,000 a month consistently. And I do have a video about that. Um, right here is this video um, kind of going over how I got to that point. If you are interested and you're just randomly finding this video and me for the first time and have no idea what I'm talking about, I really would recommend you watch that video after this one. So these days, Bailey Design Co. brings in a little over $10,000 a month. And and this was kind of in response to um, a comment that I got a few weeks ago on a YouTube video about uh, pointing out that my shop has only been steady declining and that I basically don't know what I'm talking about, but I wanted to address that in the email, which is what I did. And uh, the response was so positive and supportive and overwhelming. And I just wanted to point out that while this shop de is declining from what it has been, there is a specific reason for it. And that is because there has been four other businesses built after that that have totally taken over as far as financial as far as my time and I'm not putting as much effort into Bailey Design Co because it basically runs itself now. I do add designs consistently to it, but they are not designs that I am creating to go viral and um, try to bring in as much sales as I can. The only designs that I even create for this store now are based off of customer requests and I'll get into where I get those requests in a moment, but they're not designed to go viral. So this store is bringing in the 10,000 that it is just on the sales that are uh, just coming in organically. I do not run ads anymore on this store. I don't actively promote it on any social media platform. So for me, just by adding the few designs that I do each week, it is a pretty passive source of income because most of those sales are coming from original old viral designs. So moving on to business number two is Bailey Tumblr Designs, which is my own website and it is a membership subscription type model. So every design that is on Bailey Design Co. goes into my own website. This was big for me starting out um, on Etsy because I am very familiar with the platform and I just know that you should never ever rely on one marketplace. So pretty much six months after I started the designs um, solely, I went ahead and started my own website. So that would have been June 2022. And I didn't get, no, it was a little bit earlier than that because I had, um, or I think I started it just a few months right after I kind of went viral. The dates are are getting all mixed, mixed up now. Anyway, the um, Bailey D Tumblr Designs is just a membership subscription model. It works just like Creative Fabrica. People can purchase monthly, yearly, or a lifetime option, and then they have unlimited access to all of my designs. So, that is what I mean when I create my designs these days that go on the Etsy shop. 
I am creating for from requests that I get from those membership customers. Since they are entitled to a certain amount that we have set up that they get each month, I heavily focus on what they're requesting within my Facebook group that was built for Etsy customers and membership customers as well as a place to grow my group, my audience, and I take monthly requests in that group and fulfill as much of them as I can. So I would say that now, since I have built my audience, again, that Facebook group of over 10,000 people, and I have built my email list for those Tumblr customers um, to close to 19,000 people, that the Baylor, Bailey Tumblr Designs um, Club is pretty passive because it is just the same designs that I am making for Etsy. They just go onto the membership site as well. So that pretty much fluctuates every month between 15 to $20,000 a month because you have um, reoccurring customers. There's always going to be a percentage of them that will drop off each month, but they might come back two months later and repurchase again. It also varies too because many people will choose to buy a year membership so that they're not paying monthly or every now and then, which is pretty consistent, you'll get those ones that are much higher ticket and they will purchase a lifetime access. So business number three was again built off of the Tumblr Designs success because last year I was starting to get, and this is middle 2023, so many requests either via email or my Etsy shop asking if I actually taught how to design Tumblr wraps and how to sell digital products on Etsy. So Digitally Purpose, which is my course community, and I call it that because it is a course and a community combined. It is kind of like a hybrid option because there are not many options out there that are not just a course or just a community membership thing. It really does combine the two because I offer things like shop audits and live Q&A calls, as well as continuous weekly training on the things that are applicable for digital product shops on Etsy. It really is an all-in-one option for someone looking to sell digital products on Etsy and that can be any type of digital product. It doesn't necessarily have to be Tumblr designs or clip art. I also have lots of resources for people who sell digital planners or checklists and printables because I have sold those as well. I wouldn't say Digitally Purpose is very passive as well. I know a lot of people like to say, um, to build a course and then you'll be able to make passive income all of the time But mine is structured so differently because I do offer those shop audits and live Q&A calls and then the continued weekly trainings um, That are just available on demand if you choose to watch them or not So it is I, it's semi passive because the course is passive that was created last year and people are able just to go through that at their own pace but there is a um, somewhat personal level on the community side because I'm in there answering, answering questions daily and then again um, doing those extra add-ons that I offer as part of it. So it does bring in close to twenty dollars to $25,000 a month on average. So it is a big part of my business, but in reality, it's something that I just enjoy doing so much. I love the community aspect of it and being able to add new trainings uh, whenever something new or trending comes up on within the Etsy digital product space. So I really, really love this part of my business. And I will say that it's probably the most time that I spend on any of the businesses that I have right now because I just enjoy it so much. If you are interested in learning more about selling digital products online and wanted to be a member of this type of community, then that link will be down in the description below. So moving on to business number four is I call it my unpredictable passive income business. And I dump all of these things into this bucket because it really is unpredictable and it really can't be, while it is a big chunk of change, it just can't be predicted because it is things like AdSense from YouTube videos or um, the equivalent of AdSense on my TikTok channels 
or Instagram. Not that I'm very active on there anymore, but I used to have some and there's still things that come in from those sources. It also includes all of my affiliate income. So when I actually recommend the brand of tumblers that I print on, that would be considered, a, and someone purchases through my link, that would be considered an affiliate income. So I have many of these affiliate um, brands that I work with as far as on both sides of the business since I have the digital and the physical side as well still. There are things like the software I use to design in, which is Kittle, or the software that I use to do keyword research on Etsy, like Everbee, or their email service, which is the email service that I use. So it's just things like that um, that are placed throughout all of my content, whether that is on my blog or that is on my Pinterest account or it is mentioned in a YouTube video. It is just those people who have clicked on those affiliate links and then either have bought through it, um, which creates a small kickback to me resulting in that. That does fluctuate month to month because people cancel memberships, they cancel subscriptions, um, and then some months are just bigger than other months. That is the same with the AdSense revenue here on YouTube. And I will mention that um, it was pretty crazy to me how much YouTube did pay me in the last six months being a brand new channel, super small, just starting out over six months ago and the amount of ad revenue, not that I really would focus on that too much if you are interested in this content educational side of business, but it is an extra benefit that comes along with creating the content that you would have already been creating anyway. Another thing that falls into this uh, passive income bucket is brand sponsorships. So oftentimes brands will reach out to me to either talk about their brand of Tumblr that I am using or to talk about um, the e Everbee email uh, platform that I use on a YouTube video or to even mention them in a blog post um, or in my email newsletter as well. All of those are considered brand sponsorships and those vary from month to month because it depends on how many I actually take on. So a lot of them I say no to just because I don't have enough time to either work that into content I'm already making or I just don't have the capacity to add it in because it's already filled up for the month. So that kind of just varies. It would be more if I was producing more content, but I'm just one person and I would like to keep my life somewhat, a you know, as less hectic as it already is and not take on too many of those. So on average, that brings in about 15 to $20,000 a month, depending on how much I decide to take on. So my fifth and final business is a physical products business. And if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you know I've talked several times about my hybrid shop method, which is simply just the method of selling digital products alongside print on demand products, both of them towards a very specific audience or niche. So um, both of them have to be related so that they can work together in the same type of store so that you can build an audience and an email list and everything else that I continually teach um, to build a long-standing or sustainable business. As I've been building this out the last few months, along with products and Etsy shops and external marketing, I have ran into a few stumbling blocks and we've kind of pivoted into a semi-related field. It is, I'm not going to reveal what the product is yet, but I will be leaving a link to the description or the TikTok channel um, down below that I will be on marketing this type of product. If you do want to follow that, if you are on TikTok, to see how I would build a brand um, from the beginning up, be sure to follow that as we'll be doing our main marketing on that channel. And also I'll be doing lives on there. So if you wanted to interact and um, be on a live and I'll be able to answer questions, probably not related to digital products or anything, but if you have questions about the type of product that I am selling and making, then you are definitely welcome to hop on there. So again, that will be down in the description below. So going back to kind of how it is um, changing, 
Um, we've ran into problems with Etsy because my first option was, of course, just to build another Etsy shop because I know that the audience is on there, the search is on there, and it's been validated. But as we all know, Etsy can be fickle with new accounts and this is not like I am selling off of my big account where I have an established history. The account was opened last year. So it's been open about a year, but I had never done anything with it. There hadn't been continually posting on it. I hadn't updated anything on it. And so when we started to get a bunch of orders, this had happened to me before when I used to sell the glitter cups and we started seeing Etsy do the suppression thing that they like to do and say, you're getting too many orders. We want to slow down your views, meaning they aren't going to show you in search to give you time to catch up on your orders. We were not late with filling orders, anything like that, but it's just them as a new shop trying to make sure that the customer is being protected and not send, not overwhelm a new shop with too many orders that being said we went ahead and closed that etsy shop oh the other thing that they were doing which they famously do is hold a percentage of your income in until the customer receives their order again this is to protect um, the customer from hopefully well from scammers or anything like that and so I am just at a point where I'm not willing to deal with that type of drama and so I went ahead and shut the Etsy shop and opened it up on Shopify. If you aren't familiar with Shopify, it's just a really easy e-commerce website that you can quickly add your products to and it's your own so that you own it. Um, so we went ahead and pivoted that way and set up our own Shopify shop and then we are going to be driving our own traffic solely from TikTok to that Shopify store. This also comes with when we are driving our own traffic, just thinking long term, do we really want to even send our own outside traffic to Etsy where they are going to take three times the amount of processing and transaction fees than what we would have to pay on Shopify. So it's really kind of a no brainer as far as if we're gonna send our own traffic, we're gonna send it to Shopify because we can make an additional 8% in profit over on Shopify. So that kind of was just, again, a no brainer. So that was another big reason for deciding to keep it to ourselves on Shopify. We are still really unsure if we are going to add these products products to TikTok shop. If you aren't familiar, TikTok has released their own shopping platform and um, there still is a ton of space. There's not a lot of competition on there for physical products. So I'm not sure if we are going to release it on there. I am doing a ton of research right now and watching a ton of videos about TikTok shop and making sure I understand everything that goes into it and if we want to do that route as well. The benefit of adding our shops to TikTok shop is that we can get lots of affiliates. Um, these are people who are getting products from TikTok shop and then adding them to their own channels on TikTok or their own profiles on TikTok and they basically market it for you. It is very easy for them to click promote your product. And if I have to send them a sample, that would be included with it. Um, but there's a lot of room for opportunity so that I will not have to focus so much on the marketing of this if I decide to use the TikTok shop affiliates because it's just growing so crazy right now. So I will keep you updated on that if we do decide to add that. Or if you're following the new TikTok channel, you'll see if we've enabled the shop or not. Um, and I'll let you know in another video if people are interested, if I think that that is a good way to increase your sales, or if I would just recommend sending it straight to Shopify, or if I see any difference in the two at all. And so I know I'm gonna get this comment probably a lot in the comments if you've listened to any podcasts that I've been on before where I've been interviewed. And I have said that I was super grateful to move from physical to digital because I didn't have anything to fulfill. So why would I be going kind of full circle back to physical products again? And the answer is simple. It's just basically because, um, well, number one, I am a multi-passionate person. I do like different things 
um, in my business. These are all semi-related, built upon each other, and when the final brand product is revealed, you'll see what it is and why it is still kind of related to the other business models that I do. But honestly, at this point, three, three years later after creating physical products, the first round, I now have the infrastructure to actually support me with this, meaning I am able to hire people to fulfill the products themselves, and essentially all I am doing is the product design. So I am designing the original product and then it is fulfilled. These are all family members that I have been able to now create jobs for. So I find that, you know, I am also creating another business where I am able to support members of my own family where they don't have to work a normal nine to five. They can just work for me, which is still only a couple hours a day. It is still physical work, but they are still making the same amount of money that they would make at a nine to five office job, just working for me and probably having a lot more fun. So I am still a little part of it, again, on that product design part, and then definitely on the marketing side, since it will be my face that you will see most often on that TikTok channel. I am following all of the same tactics that I teach in Digitally Purpose and on this YouTube channel, as far as building building a loyal audience and an email and making sure that you set yourself up to be able to retarget those customers over and over again so that you're constantly not finding new products and new customers to sell to. And at this point, I am still really undecided about what to do with the Etsy route. It is really annoying because the search is there and the volume and the demand is there for the particular product. But at this point, I'm not really willing to play the Etsy new shop game as far as waiting for them to decide when I am able to fill orders or when they decide to release my funds. So I'm kind of just waiting on that right now. We're not really too worried about it. It would be an extra stream of income if we were also selling them on Etsy. It would be a little bit less than versus Shopify or the TikTok shop just due to the Etsy fees, but also you're getting that organic traffic for the search that is already there on Etsy. So once again, I will keep you updated on what we decide to do about that. If you're still here and have found this video helpful, I hope that it encourages some of you to really just see the big picture of how I kind of got to where I got within about three years. Um, and just understand that it was not all built in a day. It was built one after another consecutively to get to this level, albeit I still feel like three-ish years is a pretty short time to start all of these little micro businesses is what I call them, but I do have big goals for them. And I think with the addition of the physical product brand that by June, and I hopefully am not jinxing myself, but I am setting a big income goal to hit $40,000 a month with that physical product brand, which should bring my total combined businesses up to $100,000 a month. So be sure to continue to follow along um, to track my progress or subscribe if you are not already subscribed because I hope to be making a lot more videos like this one with business updates on certain different businesses. And if you do have any um, particular business that you would like to see more videos of, be sure to comment that down below. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.